Okay, so today I'm going to talk about Drupal 8 teaming. How many of you are from the developers in the room? And how many of you are backend developers? A few backend developers also, okay. Uh, site builders, something else, okay. Nice, I just wanted to ask, uh, because I have two different presentations, I have this Drupal 8 teaming, which is mostly for the front-end developers, and then I have one for the back-end developers also. And for the back-end developers, if you are interested, I'm actually doing a webinar in a few weeks. Uh, it's a solution webinar, so if you are interested in that, you can we can look it online. Yeah, let's get started. Uh, so my name is Lauri Eskola. Uh, I come from Finland. That is where my funny accent comes from. <laughs> I'm a front-end and a back-end developer. I work for a Finnish company called uh, Druid. And because I come from Finland, I do like cold. Uh, and if you don't know, Finland is on the same level with Alaska, so it actually is pretty cold. But besides the cold, I do like the hot also, so, and I like to go to sauna. <laughs> uh, yeah, in uh, Drupal Camp Helsinki, we did do sauna. Everyone from the camp went to one big sauna, and it was a lot of fun. Even trees commented on that, like, what's happening in Finland? <laughs> From uh, Drupal.org, you can find me with the username Lauri with the three eyes. Uh, from my Twitter handle, handle is uh, the same, but you have to change the last I for number one. Uh, if you have any any comments you want to blame on me, you 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 want to ask something, just put it there. I I will answer most likely. But let's get started now. So this is true. Uh, Drupal seven front end sucks. And it's something that front-end developers have to deal with at the moment. But why does it suck? I'm going to show you a real-life example. So I'm going to tell you what's similar between hamburgers and uh, Drupal, Drupal 7. So here we have a nice hamburger. In the hamburgers, we have wrappers and we have content. But in a Drupal, we do have also the markup, which has wrappers and content, but we do have maybe a little bit too much of them. And what we end up having when we have a markup like this in a ha hamburger is <laughs> more like this. Uh, but usually when you eat hamburgers, you also have the side order, of course. Yeah, we have a lot of side orders in the Drupal 7. So, the, the, so the, what you end up having is this. And <laughs> the front-end developers are the ones that has to deal, deal with that, that kind of things. But what happens when, when you eat too much these kind of things? It's heart attack. <laughs> so the front-end developers are the ones that have to handle this. It's not nice. So we've had to change something in a Drupal 8. Uh, in this beginning, I'm just going to tell new technologies we have in a Drupal 8. So we have the HTML5 now in the Drupal 8 core. All the HTML markup has been changed into HTML5 and CSS3. So the markup actually uses the semantic elements there just to make it look a little bit better. Uh, and because of the HTML5, we've also lost the support for IE6, IE7, and IE8. <laughs> Yay. There is a module for that, but I suggest you not to install it. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's, it's nice. Also, the classes have changed a lot because in a Drupal 7, we used to try to provide some, something useful for people out of the box instead of creating the flexibility to do what the uh, teamers want to do. Someone in the DrupalCon Amsterdam told, uh, told in his presentation that um, frontend is moving faster always than a Drupal. And I think that is something we have actually uh, accepted now in a Drupal 8. Instead of trying to provide some, some ways of doing things, like some technologies inside the Drupal, we try to provide the flexibility for the teamers to build their things how they want to build them. So let's say in the three years, I don't know if there's going to be a responsive design anymore if the mobile phones just disappear. So we don't want to 
provide the responsive design in, in, in there. We want to provide a way to build it instead. So in the three years, when we have the new hot topics, people should be able to build them. It's nice. By the way, there's the HTML class. Has anyone ever used that for teaming? Hopefully not. It's removed now. Uh, CSS has been built using Smacks and them. They are nice modern standards for building CSS. Here's just one example of, uh, of a Smacks. So we have the field class and then we have the uh, modifier name for the field. So uh, it basically tells that the, that is a na uh, field, but it's a field that is a name because it's the name is the fields modifier. Uh, so all the all the classes we have in core looks like this now. Uh, and because of these new fancy technologies, uh, the CSS has been split into many different CSS files. So actually, from the seven team, you can find this many CSS files, and there is four different folders of CSS files. So it's pretty pretty many CSS files that you can have there. But because we have so many CSS files. We, of, of course, have to provide a way to remove the CSS files. So in, the, in there, you should see a few of the CSS files that I have by default there. I'm just going to open the info, the JAML file of my uh, team, and kill these all CSS files that I don't want to be loaded anymore. So I just say style sheets remove, clear the cache, and the style sheets should be remove, uh, removed after that. Let's see. Drupal should be known for the fast loading times. <laughs> okay, the CSS files I, I told it to remove are now, not, now gone. They are not there anymore. So now you have a sophisticated way to remove the CSS files. So you don't have to know anything that you don't want to include in your, in your markup. So now we've got rid of the uh, site order with that. And Louis Nyman is the the maintainer of the seven team and Louis Nyman has been made happy with the, these new technologies and Louis Nyman has certified the Drupal 8 now. So uh, not only the CSS file structure has changed but the whole Drupal 8 file structure. So your teams are not located anymore under the site where is all my teams folder but in, instead inside a teams folder which is in the Drupal core, uh, Drupal root. And as you can see, there is the core folder where, where your core is now located. I think that is one of the most common mistakes the new people make. So I think it's a good change because now people can do how, how they would do it by default without reading the documentation. Uh, also, the uh, file structure has been changed for the modules because we have now a templates folder for the templates. In a Drupal 7, the templates used to be wherever someone has just put it them. Like in a core, they were located in the module root. And in some country modules, someone has written some hacks to uh, put them inside a Teams folder or templates folder or, or something. But now it has been standardized to be the templates folder. And that's, that's what we use in the core. So it's a little bit easier to find the templates. And the templates are now actually being used instead of the team functions. In the Drupal 7, we used a lot of team functions. We used to have 154 functions there, but in the Drupal 8, we have only 13 functions left. I don't know if there is, that is a good thing. Someone has to fix a few of them because 13 is not the lucky number. And last time I made a presentation about team functions, it was completely messed up. So someone fixed a few team functions and then we should be more luckier. But why that has happened? The, the reason why it's happened is that now we have a completely new team layer. Uh, in the other presentation I mentioned earlier, I'm going to talk more about this topic. Now I'm just going to scratch the to top of it. So in the Drupal 7, the team layer looks like this. There's multiple ways of doing things. There, there is unnecessary alteration layers. and it's something that, that's really hard to understand. In Drupal 8, we have something like this instead. 
And how we've got re how how we've made it look like this is that we've removed the duplicate ways of doing uh, some things. So all the alteration has to be working for multiple ways of doing things because we had the theme functions and we had the ha had the templates. So everything has to work had to work for both of them, and that made things really complicated. And even if you if you would have known how the Drupal seven theme layer works, it it can still take a while. To, to locate where something has been done because there is just so many different ways of doing one thing. But in Drupal 8, there is very straightforward theme layer. There's not uh, duplicated ways of doing things. So there is just a single place for one thing to be done. And it makes things easier. I don't know if everyone has heard, but uh, Drupal 8 will include this new uh, theme, theme, uh, templating engine, which is called Twig. Um, it's, it comes from a symphony and it's pretty nice because it stops a huge problem. Because when, it, when you use the PHP templating engine, it basically makes it possible to do anything there. And there is, I've seen too many times this happening that someone has been thinking that it's good to have code in a template because it's faster. The client wants us to put, put the code in the template because it's the fastest way to do anything. But I don't know. I, I, I think it's good to have, have a templating engine and making this impossible. So these kind of things are not possible anymore in uh, Drupal 8. Or basically, it is possible. You can create, you can map these functions inside a tweak. But if someone would do that, he would definitely know that he's doing something wrong because it, it would require so much work. But I, I, I want to give you the basics of Twig. Twig is actually really simple. Uh, but the, the basics of Twig include stuff that you can use if you use Twig on other projects than uh, Drupal. If you use Twig with the WordPress or with the Symfony or any other project you're running, this, this should be something that you can use there. So here is the basic sim uh, syntax of uh, printing and commenting things on uh, Twig ver uh, versus what is in PHP. So in a tweak, we don't, we don't say print. We, we put stuff on the double curly brackets. Uh, double curly brackets uh, usually and almost always means that you are printing something. Uh, and yeah, the other, on, the, on top of the print, printing, we have the command. You can also set the variables inside a tweak. You can just say set and then you t uh, give the name of the variable, and then you give what is the value of the variable. Uh, here you can see the other uh, possible way of doing th things in Twig. It's the uh, curly bracket and the percent, and that means that you are doing logic inside the Twig. So that won't be printed. It, it won't print anything. Uh, in the other example, there is just a simple array that, that, that I'm setting in with a Twig. <coughs> so that is, that is pretty simple. But how do you access the data if, if you have something more complicated? In the PHP, the teamers, the, the front-end developers has to know what's the differences be, difference between arrays, objects, and even if things got complicated, methods. But in a tweak, we have something called tweak magic, which uh, solves that problem. So on the backend side, when the teamer uses the dot syntax, uh, we try all the different possibilities it could be. So we, uh, the teamers always use the same syntax for accessi accessing the data, whatever the data is, whatever format it's, it's in. So as you can see in my example, uh, the, the sandwich, it's the key of the array. Then we have the content, which is uh, uh, the property, property of an object. And even in the end, the eat is a method in an uh, object. So and all of these di uh, three different ways are being accessed uh, one way. So it, it makes things a little bit easier. And it, it just removes some, some things that the teamers has to understand. So they can focus on making things work on different browsers. If you want to find stuff in a tweak, there is a dump function. It will just do a bar dump for, for the uh, stuff you put inside it. So you can give it a parameter. Uh, in the second example, I give, give it a parameter foo. 
and it will print the, what, what that full uh, variable con uh, contains. But if you don't put any parameter for, the, for, for this function, it will just simply print everything that you have in your Twig, Twig template. So it will give you uh, all the different variables you have and all the content they have. In a Drupal, the, the templates usually have pretty much variables there, so it usually doesn't work there. But if you create your own template and you want to test it there, there, there it should be possible. Um, of course, you have to be able to create loops inside a tweak. Uh, it works kind of like for, for it in a PHP. You just say for, then the, the name of the variable that 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 is being created out of the uh, loop, and then you say in, and then you give the variable that is the array containing all the data, uh, and then you just uh, then you can just access the data over there. But why the for loops are cool in a tweak is that the, the tweak provides uh, some math, some some logic inside the for loop out of the box, so you don't have to do uh, do these kind of things by yourself in PHP. You wouldn't get this by the for each loop. Uh, you would have to do it by yourself. So in a in a tweak, you get the loop object where you can get the length. Um, then then you get the boolean type of uh, property, whether you are on the first or last item of the for for each, and you can even get the current uh, item that you're accessing, like the index of the current item. So you, if you have uh, ten uh, ten items there and you are on the fifth item, it will give you the number five. And uh, with this data, you can build whatever logic you want. And yeah, because Tweak has been built for the teamers, they can basically provide you whatever whatever help, helpful things they want. And one of them is this. If you have a forage loop, but there is no data, you, you usually want to have a uh, backup to provide no results text or, or something like that. Then you can just say in your for each loop without uh, stopping the for each loop, you just say else. So if there is nothing to put in the loop, then it will go to the else and print whatever you have there. It's just something, it's a one good example of that. It's that the tweak makes things easier for the teamers because it's created for the teamers <coughs> instead of PHP, which is made for creating the lo uh, logic on the backend side. In a tweak, we also have uh, we have the functions, then we have the, then we have a filters, which are usually meant to manipulate the, the content into something else. So what the filters do, it takes the uh, content of a variable or a text you are providing it and uh, returns it back to you in a different format. So in this upper filter, basically it just takes the string you provide for the upper filter and returns it back as the uppercase letters. Um, so, uh, and prints it, of course. Usually we use this syntax. This is the short, short syntax for the filters. Um, so I, I set in this example a variable name with the value Lauri, and I want to print the length of the variable. And so, I, so I want to use the length filter. It just simply prints the length of the, of the string that it, that it has as a parameter. Uh, Twig has quite a, quite a few uh, default filters, and these are the all filters that Twig has built, built inside. You can also provide your own filters, but these are the ones that the uh, Twig has. One more very very cool thing in a Twig is uh, Twig blocks. These are very different with the uh, Drupal blocks. Don't uh, mess them up together. But what weak blocks are created for is that you can actually build logic in your templates. So uh, you can create a block that you can extend in the other template. So in a Drupal, we have the specific team, uh, team suggestions. So if you have a more specific team suggestion, you can say that you are extending the less specific template. And then you just override a single block. I'm going to give you a nice demo of that so you can probably get a better, better understanding on that. So I'm going to first edit my page template. I'm going to add here a block. Uh, 
Okay, so we need more ketones, yeah? And let's see. I should have the text there. Okay, it's just printing the content of the block there. But now the cool stuff starts happening. So what I'm going to do is uh, check the uh, more specific template. So I want on the front page, add a little bit more ketones there. So instead of copying the whole template, I just create a new, new empty template. And I'm in the beginning telling that I'm extending the page template. Now I have to tell what I'm extending from in the template. So I'm, I'm extending the header block. First, I'm printing what the original block is, uh, is doing. So I just say parent, and it will print whatever is there. And then I'm adding the stuff I want to add there in the other template. OK. Now on the front page, I should have the text kitten. OK, I have the text kitten on the front page. Let's see what's happening on the uh, on this sub sub page, there there shouldn't be. Yeah, the text is not there, and uh, okay, so it's working. But now the cool stuff starts happening. Okay, the client asks me to add something for the for for all the pages, not only the front page, not only the sub page. So now I'm just gonna edit the page template. I'm gonna add some text what they wanted to have there, and. Um, now, the text I added there, I added it only to one template. should appear on all different uh, pages. So it's appearing on the front page, which has its own template. But because it's extending, it doesn't override all the changes from there. So it's pretty cool. If you, if you are interested in the tweak, you can find more stuff from the tweak documentation that Sensio Labs is providing from a tweak.sensialabs.org. All these things that I was talking now uh, is something that you can find from that website. Uh, that, that documentation is not available at the tuple.org because it's uh, it, uh, tweak building things. If you don't like it, I, but we have a solution if you don't like it. Uh, PHP templating engine is still inside Drupal 8 core. So in your uh, info file, you can just say engine PHP template and your PHP templates will be there. But I don't know if it's working and to be honest, I don't really care if it's working. <laughs> uh, so then let's move forward in the Drupal specific tweak functionalities. When we've integrated tweak in the Drupal, We've tried to be very gentle, not to mess up with the experience that the people have had using Twig in other projects that are not Drupal. So we haven't removed anything from Twig. Instead, we've been extending it and creating some Drupal-specific functionalities, like filters and functions and things, things like that, that Drupal needs. So a few of the filters we've added there are clean class filter, we have without filter, we have placeholder filter. So the clean class filter is something we use to clean class names. And in the example, I just have a string containing Lowry slash uh, Druid. And when it's being printed, it just uh, converts the slash into a dash that's been usually used in the class names. Then we have the fi without filter, which is actually a replacement for the hide function in a Drupal 7. And uh, but what it does, when you print an array, it will just remove the ar array item by the key or the content. So if, if you want to remove, uh, let's say, Lowry from the list, you just save without Lowry. And then it will print everything else but not that. So let's say if you, uh, ren when, when you have a render array in a template and you want to hide something, you don't want to print something, then you just say without and then you give what do you what do you don't what do you don't want to include? Let's say on the node template you could say without links if you don't want to render the links, then then they won't be rendered. Then then we have the placeholder filter, which is uh, which is a placeholder filter. So if you if you have a variable and it doesn't have a content and you you use the placeholder filter, it will provide the default value for the for for that uh, variable. So 
in, in this example, there is a stuff variable that hasn't been set, but I use the placeholder filter, so it will pr uh, print the content of the placeholder. Uh, more cool stuff we have in a Drupal 8. It, we have a object to take care of the HTML, HTML attributes. So this HTML attributes thing has been created to storage the attributes in a, in a nice place. So it can, they can be remo uh, removed, they can be changed and added in any place of the team uh, on, the, on the front end side. So you can remove, add, modif modify them on the pre-processes, you can modify it in the template. I guess there is other places where you can also modify them, but that is just removing the use of uh, regex uh, that you had to do in the Drupal 7 because of what what we what you had there was just a one string containing all the all the classes or all the attributes you had. So then, if you wanted to modify it, it was basically impossible. Now, when we have them in a, a nice storage, you can say set attribute or remove attribute or whatever you want, just to manipulate the attributes you have there. Uh, then we have. That is actually very clever because it's, uh, we have taken care of different kind of uh, attributes. There is uh, sing single value attributes like ID or data attributes. Then there is array type of attributes like uh, classes. So usually when you add classes, there is multiple of them. So then you have to say add class. So it will add a single uh, class for, for that array. If there is no classes at all, then it won't print the class attribute at all. At all. You can also say uh, remove class if you want to remove something. Let's say the backend developer adds some really, really bad classes in the backend. Like, yeah, usually the front end developers like, don't like carrots or potatoes, so they want to replace them with the bacon and the beef. And you can do on the front end, you say just remove class carrot and potato and say add class bacon and beef. So that way they will be replaced into something more teamable. So if there is some bad classes coming from uh, Drupal or wherever they, are, they would be coming, you could just say remove class, and it just remove them, removes them. Uh, of course, we have the trans uh, filters for the translations, because Drupal 8 is multilingual. And if you need to provide any strings inside your uh, Twig templates, you have to have a way to translate them. So you can use the T filter for that. And it basically works the same way as uh, T function in uh, Drupal 7. You can uh, use the placeholders, you can placeholders or, or tokens, whatever they are called. And um, that way you can, you can do whatever you want with the T functions. Uh, there is two different ways of uh, using the T function. I guess these are uh, more or less the similar. similar. So if you need to, if you need to uh, translate something and have uh, tokens inside it, you can use the trans, trans uh, filter also, which uh, where you don't have to use the placeholders. Uh, one more cool thing about the tweak in uh, Drupal, what we've changed in the Drupal integration, is the tweak debug. So you don't have to guess anymore where your markup is coming from. Uh, so what we do is we add these kind of blocks that you might have saw, saw already in the, in, uh, in the example I, I showed you. What we have there is we have the, uh, the name of the team, team hook. We have all the different uh, template suggestions there. And we have the location of the current template where it's coming from. So I'm going to show a very short example of this. So this is the markup I have in a Drupal 8. I have no idea where the stuff is coming from because there is no debug data. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna edit the services.jaml file in the site's default folder. I'm gonna tell that the debug should be uh, on, auto reload should be on, and the caching should be off. Those are, those are changed because then I don't have to reload uh, the, the I don't have to clear the cache every time I cha change a tweak template because the tweak templates are actually being converted in a PHP code. 
Okay, now I have the uh, the debug data here. Now you actually have some sort of idea where the stuff is coming from. And that way you can actually find the templates you should be using. You want, you want this thing in a Drupal 7? Yeah, actually what happened was that we asked for a new feature and people did it and it's now in a Drupal 7. So it's being backported from Drupal 8 to Drupal 7, which is pretty awesome. So you can use these new Drupal 8 features also in the Drupal 7 when they are applicable. Uh, what else has been done? The templates has been cleaned up. Of course, the logic has, has to be changed a little bit because we used to have the team functions and now we have them in the templates. And because they are in the templates, we started thinking that should this be something that the teamers can actually use for something. And that way we've made Morten DK, who is the one guy who is blaming, messing around and uh, moaning that the Drupal 8 uh, markup is uh, crap. And But now, actually, I think we've got, it, got, got him out of his job. I was talking with him in November, and he said, what I'm going to do now, because I cannot do the angry teamer session anymore. And if I do happy teamer session, no one is going to come there. So <laughs> what I should do? But I think it's a position, uh, positive uh, problem, at least for me. So few examples of uh, templates that we have refactored. One of them is pages. How many of you have enjoyed theming pages in Drupal 7? <laughs> okay, I don't see anyone. That's good. So now I'm going to show you how this happens in uh, Drupal 8. In Drupal 7, I would have spent spend it probably two or three days. Okay, I don't have two or three days to show you how it happens in Drupal 7, so I'm going to show you how it happens in Drupal 8. So I'm going to get the template from the system module first. Let's copy it. OK, now I want to remove the UL and LI elements from my pager. I want to just have A links. That is my dream markup. Let's see how I do it. This is, by the way, 10 times faster than I actually typed. It still feels pretty slow. I'm a slow typer, as you can see. OK, so I'm going to set a new item class for the uh, active class we had in the markup. I'm going to say add class, the item class. Then I'm going to remove some more markup. One more LI element. Oh, there's still one. The go to last page. OK, now I've removed this. I'm going to clear the cache. And let's see how my pager's markup looks like now. OK, the, it changed a little bit the visually. But I have my dream markup there. Yeah. Oh, I have multiple active pagers there. Did I make a mistake? Probably yes. Okay, let's let's fix that. Okay, what's wrong there? Ah, okay. Uh, the variable isn't being set as empty on the for, for loop. So, okay, now it's working. Okay, let's see how long did that take. Two minute thirty seconds. Okay, that's pretty good. 2 minutes 30 seconds compared to 2 days. I guess there's going to be people losing jobs. <laughs> okay, another example, menu. How many of you have liked theming menus in Drupal, Drupal 7? Okay, no one, again. Okay, so I'm going to copy the default menu template. I'm going to create my own for the main menu. Do not mess up with the toolbar. There we have some macro. I don't know how it works, but it works. I can just do my thing. So I'm going to set the menu class to C menu because I want to uh, prefix it with the C because I consider it as a component. Yeah. And then I want to add a menu level class. That would have been hard in Drupal 7, but 
Okay, now it's there. Let's see. Yeah. Things are starting looking better. Okay, the classes are there. The menu level class is there. And uh, see, menu class is there. Oh, wait a minute. There is a leaf class? What is that for? I don't know. Okay, let's just remove it because I don't want to have a leaf class there. So I'm going to go back, edit my template, and now I'm going to say remove class leaf. And I shouldn't have a leaf class anymore after that. Yeah, the leaf class is removed. So that was even faster. One minute, 30 seconds to create the green markup for a menu. That's pretty good. I want to talk about one more thing. That is the consensus banana. That is something uh, that happened in uh, DrupalCon Austin. Uh, basically what we did was we created peas between two different kinds of teamers. There, and what those two kinds of teamers are the people who want to have the sensible defaults, who want to have the classes built in, and then there are the angry teamers who don't want to have anything by default, and they just want to hack everything by themselves. Yeah, so we had to create a plan for that. So we created a two-step plan. The, the first phase was that we move all the classes, the templates from the pre-process functions. So they can actually be removed somehow, because when they are in the pre-process functions, they are located in the module code, which is a little bit harder to override. And that's being done. Then the phase two is to create a new base team in the core that is called Classy. And that is almost done. There it's like probably 90% done. But in the phase two, what we did was we just took all the classes out of the PHP code and created this kind of code blocks in the templates. So here you have all your classes, and if you want to remove some of them, you can just remove them. Yeah. So, like, I want to remove the view mode class because I don't need it, or the unpublished class. Now they are gone. So what about the new team, Classy? Uh, so the Classy is the team that will provide the sensible defaults instead of the core modules providing them. So if you want to create your awesome team, that includes the sensible defaults. Then you just extend the classy and you will have your classes there. But if you want to create your custom team without any markup, then you just don't extend the classy and you don't get any, any, any sensible defaults from Drupal. Then you're on your own. And how this works in the core, we have Bartik and Seven. They are both extending classy. So they have the classes coming from the classy instead of the core. And then we have the start that is not extending classy, which is only printing the uh, markup con coming from a core. And what will this thing changed? change is that uh, if you don't want, you don't have to get any classes from core. And the automated tests are even using classy now if they need to use classes. And that allows us to simplify the core markup even more because we don't want to have unnecessary divs or other elements there, which is pretty nice. But remember, if you are creating a team, you, you should extend Classy because uh, there are still things that are going to change in the, uh, in the so, so what I mean is that the classes are still going to change in the core. But if you extend Classy, then they will be most likely uh, more stable. If you want to help, RC1 means markup freeze for us. But we can still get stuff done because the RC1 is pretty far away, as, at least from my perspective. So you should join the sprints that are happening over there. And then we have time for our questions. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we have 10 minutes time for our questions. So you can ask. Usually when I put this picture on, people don't want to ask any questions. But <laughs> yeah. Everybody cheered when you said no Internet Explorer 678. But uh, my clients do need Windows XP, and that means IE8. Do things like HTML ship and modernizers still work in Drupal 8? Yes, you can definitely uh, use any that kind of technologies in uh, Drupal 8. So there is the module 
uh, which brings the Drupal, which brings the IE8 support back for uh, Drupal 8. But uh, the core officially doesn't support those technologies. And it's actually, um, what I think is, it's easier to sell for the clients that, the, that they shouldn't support the I, IE8 anymore because the Drupal core doesn't support it neither anymore. Sure. Of course, if there is a significant amount of IE8 users using the site, then you probably have to figure out a way to support them. There's a significant number of Windows XP users. Yeah, but the, the support of Windows XP has also... <laughs> they don't know that. <laughs> yeah. Do you, do you have your slideshow online? Yes, I, do have, I will uh, put my slides on the Midcap website. I'm sorry that it's not there yet because I had some technical troubles, but it will, it will come there later, probably today. So, you know, Drupal 8 is not done yet, but it seems it's significantly slower. If the slowness, obviously, the performance enhancements and all those things have not been done. Is, is that performance degradation coming from Twig also? Uh, Twig also uh, makes something slower. That's uh, true. But Twig also provides good ways for caching. And also on the team layer, uh, we've made significant... Uh, changes to make the caching uh, better. Uh, so I'm running a Drupal 8 project now, and uh, we did some testing between the old Drupal 7 website and Drupal 8 in, in, the, in, the, in the performance. And after all the caching has been enabled and everything has been done more or less properly, uh, Drupal 8 is more or less the same as uh, Drupal 7. Follow on to that. Is there a cache bin associated with Twig which you can use for OP, OP cache or something like that? Uh, all the Twig templates are being cached into a PHP uh, PHP uh, okay. code, so they are not being transferred every time uh, you load a page. Um, I think, yeah, on the demo I showed when I changed the services to Jamu, I turned off the Twig caching. Yeah. Thank you. Any other questions? Yeah. Drupal 7 has a lot of uh, extra divs in it. Is Drupal 8 uh, any more efficient? Drupal 8 does have pretty much divs, but uh, it has less than Drupal 7, definitely. But in Drupal 8, it's extremely easy to remove the divs by yourself. So if you don't, if you if you want to remove the divs by yourself, it should be re relatively easy. Uh, and the reason for that is that the markup is now coming from the templates. Instead of in Drupal Seven, it was coming from the team functions, which were way more harder to uh, override than the templates. So uh, it's yes and no. Are any of the major themes like Zen, Aurora, ported to where they can be tested? I think none of those two examples are on uh, Drupal 8 yet, but there is some other uh, base themes that are on a Drupal 8. Do you know where to find them? I was looking at uh, Probably. I'm not sure if you can use even the team search to look for the uh, Drupal 8 themes. Yeah. That are on the Drupal.org. Yeah, you can specify, look for things for Drupal 8, and they lives you all lots and lots of things that are only good for 7. No downloads for 8. No okay. For eight. I think uh, Omega and I think Zen has like a like a dev version. Because of Omega. I think both Omega and Zen both have dev versions. Do you have to get those from GitHub or are they in? No, I think you can actually get them from the site. Yeah, I actually use Zen probably a few months ago, and back then uh, it was still heavily on the on the dev pace. Omega, yeah, with the Omega, there's happening a huge amount of drama anyway. I, right. like, yeah, That's Omega. yeah. So I I really don't know what the situation is there. Uh, what Omega does at the moment is something that uh, I'm not really interested in because of the the goal they are reaching is something I don't really uh, like. But uh, probably the bootstrap team might be working. I think I tried it a few months ago. 
and it was already in a, I guess it was working pretty well. Any more questions? I think then we can wrap up. Uh, if you have any more questions, just come to talk to me, I, I will be around. Thank you.